If you completely cut out carbohydrates, so if your goal is to get into ketosis, there is specific benefits, which we will probably get into during the ketone podcast. But a lot of what you're going to lose weight wise is water weight. For every, let's say one pound of glycogen, I think about five pounds of water will follow that. So a lot of the weight that you lose is water weight. And as you mentioned, that is a bit of a, maybe it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. People like to see results very fast. But um, with weight loss, as we've discussed many times, you want to have very slow progress. The slower and the more consistent, the better. Another one we get a lot about with carbs is as it relates to you know, body composition, weight loss, people trying to improve their health. You know, should I go low carb? Should I go low fat? Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody says, should I go low protein now? Because mm -hmm. we're wanting to preserve lean body mass if yes. weight loss is the goal. So you know, there's this talk about, oh, well, you'll lose a lot more weight on the ketogenic diet. And I think it's becoming more well known that that relates to the, the glycogen stores that become depleted. But um, not always. Some people will still tout these, uh, I guess, the initial weight loss as being greater. And maybe there is sort of a, like a placebo effect there. Like people think, oh, my diet's working really well because I lost four pounds the first week. So what do you think about, you know, low carb, low fat, um, carbohydrates as part of a diet, cutting out carbohydrates completely, just in the context of not thinking about exercise performance, but just as it relates to, you know, weight loss. If you completely cut out carbohydrates, so if your goal is to get into ketosis, there is specific benefits, which we will probably get into during the ketone podcast. But a lot of what you're going to lose weight wise is water weight. For every, let's say one pound of glycogen, I think about five pounds of water will follow that. So a lot of the weight that you lose is water weight. And as you mentioned, that is a bit of a, maybe it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. People like to see results very fast. But um, with weight loss, as we've discussed many times, you want to have very slow progress. The slower and the more consistent, the better. A lot of times there is uh, stepwise change on the scale. And some of that is also related to like salt balance or even things like creatine. Um, but the, uh, it, you're not losing six pounds of body fat the first two weeks or the first week. You mean people aren't actually in a 18,000 to 25,000 calorie deficit during the first week. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's kind of funny to talk about, but it is important to remember because it is not uncommon to hear people say, you know, I've done the, the ketogenic diet or the keto diet four different times and each time I've lost 20 pounds and really um, they've probably only lost 10 pounds each one of those times, if that much. Yeah, yeah. and there's a great graph here. This was, I believe, actually a metabolic um, ward study where they're looking at energy expenditure. Uh, it, this may have been even some work that was related to the sort of carbohydrate insulin model out there of, of obesity and weight loss. But you can see if you're looking at this sort of you know, stepwise decrease here, looking at the, um, the ketogenic diet versus the baseline diet, you see that the, you know, the weight loss is actually you know, a bit slower here, or the fat loss is actually a bit slower here at the beginning of the ketogenic diet, the change in body fat while the weight loss is actually a bit more rapid. So if you're looking at the first seven to 10 days, it looks like that's where a lot of the weight loss happens. Uh, and then the fat loss actually seems to sort of speed up there. Maybe this is because people are having a bit more satiety, which you know, a lot of people anecdotally eating the ketogenic diet, they find that their satiety is better. Not for everybody, of course, but there are people out there that have done very well with it. So yep. I think that's an interesting graph um, here in this study. and you can kind of see the opposite. So, you know, um, people in the health and fitness community or bodybuilding community are familiar with carb loading. And when someone is carb loading, they are you know, usually carb depleted to start. And then there's sort of this um, glycogen, I guess, overcompensation where you introduce all these carbohydrates and then the muscles can kind of um, keep an extra reserve, it would seem. Mm -hmm. So study actually looked at this and you see the exact opposite of here. So, you know, you think, Cutting out carbohydrates, it's going to pull off more weight, pull off more water. If you do a DEX on somebody that's carb depleted, you're going to see a drop in the lean body mass. But that's a lot of it is, is water. Just like we've heard many people say, you drink a gallon of water and you get on the DEXA table, you're going to be eight pounds of lean body mass heavier. But when you look at uh, one study that actually had you know, people that were weight training and then they 
um, had one on a ketogenic diet, one on a standard diet. The It was week 10 through 11 where they sort of did a carb refeed, re replenish these glycogen stores, and they saw a lean body mass increase 4.8% that final week, weeks 10 to 11, where these people were adding carbohydrates back into their diet. Now, the protocol is behind a paywall, so we don't know exactly what that looked like. And mm -hmm. could you even make that number higher with some sodium and creatine? Probably, Probably so. But for you know the average person out there, let's say a 200 pound person population, 30% body fat, not that uncommon to see nowadays, that person would probably put on about seven pounds going off keto and adding carbohydrates back in for that week. Now, does that mean that that person added seven pounds of muscle mass on the DEXA? Yes. In yes. actuality. Lean, dry muscle tissue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In actuality, no. But that just kind of shows, speaks to the like recommendations we give about when people are getting DEXA scans to do it very consistently. So usually early in the morning, probably not after a weekend when people tend to have more sodium, alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe midweek and then have a consistent amount of water before each DEXA scan. Yep. Or you can get it after having traveler's diarrhea <laughs> or the flu. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but yeah, being consistent with that is certainly important. Um, and knowing the difference between um, like the, the water mass of lean body mass and then lean dry muscle tissue and also bone mineral density, which is another thing that uh, DEXA scans measure is important. So um, I guess the takeaway is you're not going to put on seven pounds of lean, dry muscle tissue if you just add carbs into your diet. But you might look like it. You might. If you're lean enough. Yep. Yeah.